So I'm here in SketchUp and I've designed this nifty little book stand type of thing. Um, could probably also be used as a plate stand. It's kind of where I got the idea from. Um, I'm not going to give too much of a tutorial on how to use SketchUp because I'm actually pretty new to it myself, but I'll go ahead and put a link um, to a, a YouTube video that is a good tutorial for if you're new to SketchUp. Um, but I have found it really simple to use uh, off the bat. So now that we've got this design, um, we're going to want to save it as an F SVG so we can upload it into MakerCam and then cut it out. So in order to save um, the piece that we want as an SVG that we can then upload into MakerCam, you just need to select the piece that you want. So if you double click on the one side, um, you're gonna see this box form around it and that lets you know that you've selected that whole object. And then if you actually click one more time, you'll see that that highlights, um, that gets those blue dots on it. And that is actually the, the piece right there that we're gonna wanna cut. And that's gonna, saving that is gonna be perfect for um, cutting it with Maslow. So once you've got that selected, with those blue dots, go up into this right-hand corner and click SVG. Um, and then you're going to want to save it. Um, make sure you save it as an SVG, um, obviously. And we're just going to go ahead and save it on the desktop. Um, and make sure that you have it in inches, not millimeters, um, because MakerCam works in inches, and it's going to save us a lot of a headache later if we just go ahead and, go ahead and save in inches right now. So you can just go ahead and click save. And then the file has been saved on the desktop. So here we are in MakerCam. Um, we're gonna go ahead and just go to file and open SVG file. And that is going to lead us to our book stand. Go ahead and open it up. And you can see, there it is. So what we're gonna go ahead and do from the start is just copy and paste this to get two of them because we're gonna need two of them um, in order to complete our book stand. And it's much easier if we just do these cuts um, all in one tool path. So to duplicate them from the beginning is gonna be the simplest way to go about this. So once we've got the two that we need, we're gonna go ahead and select both of them. And then we're gonna go to profile operation. So now we've opened this profile operation and we're just gonna change some of the settings. So the first thing is the tool diameter. That's the size of the bit. It's a quarter inch, so this is good to go already. The target depth, we're gonna to change to 0.55 because we're cutting half inch plywood. We just wanna add that extra 0.05 to make sure that we make it all the way through. The safety height is the amount that the bit raises um, over the wood when it's moving to a different cutting location. We can just go ahead and make that 0.25. It's plenty of space. Um, the step down and the feed rate are kind of up to you, but what we found works best is doing a tenth of an inch. Um, and that's the depth that the bit will move down with each pass that it makes on the cut with a feed rate of just 25. And that's going to give you the right speed and um, accuracy to make a nice clean cut. So go ahead and say OK with that. So now that we have these pieces selected, we're going to go to cam and we're going to click calculate all. And that will give us an outline of the tool path that the router is actually going to cut. It's this green line you can see. So I'm going to highlight that once again and then I'm going to go to cam again and add tabs so that the pieces don't fall when we're cutting. And because these pieces are pretty small, it's okay to just um, only have tabs every once in a while. So I'm going to do every 10 inches and that should just give me a few tabs on the pieces. I'm going to make those tabs half an inch. So I'll click OK. And then you can see that these blue circles come up and that is where the tabs will be. So we'll go ahead and make sure this is all selected. Um, calculate all one more time. And then we can go to export the G-code. So when you're doing this, make sure that you have all of your profiles selected. It's possible that you could have calculated multiple profiles all for one cut. Um, so just make sure, in this case we did it all in one, but make sure that you select them all if you're trying to do a continuous cut. So now that we have the profile selected, we're going to click Export Selected Tool Pass. And we're going to name this Book Stand. 
And I'm going to go ahead and save it in our Dropbox so that it'll be easy to open on the tablet so that we can make the cut with the mouse. So now I'm here in ground control and you can see that there are these little red and green dots and that's showing where the z-axis is going to go in and out so that's marking the places where the cut is going to make tabs. So what we need to do right now is we actually need to move the machine over a little bit because we only got a piece of wood that was a smaller nicer piece of wood and so in order to make the cut we need to move the machine. So I'm going to go ahead and go over here you can see where it says four and that's going to set the number of inches we want to move the machine. So I do want to move it four, but for the example, I'm going to open this up. You can see you can just select whatever number you want. So I'm going to click four and then hit done. And then I'll go over to these navigational arrows and I want to move it over to the right. So I'm going to go ahead and click the right arrow and that's going to move the machine over right now four inches. And now that we are on the right location on the wood, um, we're going to go ahead and click Define Zero, and that is going to move the design itself over. So now it will start the cut in the correct place. So from here, all we need to do is just go ahead and click Run and start the cut. So here's the final cut. Um, it looks really good. I think it came out really well. You can see, I think when I hold it up, that there's the, um, you still see the tabs left in. So I'm going to go ahead and use this, this little saw to finish cutting the tabs. And this has come in really useful to cut the tabs. We would recommend this if you are interested in one. Um, but then once I cut those tabs out, then I'll go ahead and sand it down and give it a coat of polyurethane and put on the hinges.